Telomere shortening is a hallmark of aging. Additionally, telomere shortening negatively impacts other hallmarks of aging, including genomic instability, mitochondrial dysfunction, and stem cell exhaustion. More specifically, telomere, telomere length declines during aging, with data for men and women as shown there. On the y-axis, we've got LTL, or leukocyte tel telomere length, in kilobases, and on the x-axis, we've got age plotted from about 20 to about 100 years old. And for both men and women, we can see that there's an age-related decrease for telomere length, such that telomere length in youth is about 7.75 kilobases, whereas in centenarians, or 100-year-olds, it's closer to about 5 kilobases. Now, a central premise of the channel is to slow aging by optimizing biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible, including telomere length. So with that in mind, in today's video, I, have, I now have 10 tests since 2022, so what's my data? And then additionally, which factors are significantly correlated with telomere length? So let's jump into the data. So to address that, I sent blood to True Diagnostic, and if you want to measure your own telomere length, there's a discount link in the video's description. So the most recent test that I have data for just arrived uh, about a week ago, and that's test number seven in 2023, uh, November 27th test. And for that test, we can see that telomere length, according to the screenshot, was 7.1 kilobases. But that's uh, an error because below that screenshot in the report, it showed that it was 7.19 kilobases. So for whatever reason, there was a rounding error for whomever at True Diagnostic made the, this image. Now, note that in youth, 7.75 kilobases is what's found. So I've got some work to do there to get it closer to youth from 7.19 to 7.75 kilobases. But the good news is this is my longest telomere length yet over 10 tests. So note that this is just one test though. For comparison, let's see how telomere length in 2023 compares against 2022. And that's what we'll see here. On the y-axis, we've got telomere length with data for 2022 on the left and 2023 on the right. Over three tests in 2022, average telomere length was 7.04 kilobases. And after seven tests in 2023, I increased it to 7.14 kilobases. And note that on this image, which includes all of my data, we can see that now True Diagnostic properly rounded up as that 7.19 is a 7.2 there on the plot. Now, rather than just looking at year-to-year -year averages, we can calculate using a two-sample t-test if this is a significant difference. And we can see, based on the p-value being less than 0.05, I was able to significantly increase telomere length in 2023 versus 2022. And note that it declines during aging. So this is a, uh, some, this is a good, good data. So with that in mind, which factors may impact telomere length? How am I able or how have I done this? Or what's underlying, potentially underlying this, these improvements? So let's start off with correlations for diet with telomere length. And note that I looked at 87 different comparisons, so 87 different correlations with telomere length, which included most uh, all of the foods that I commonly consume, and then also macronutrients and micronutrients. And note that for this approach, it includes using the average dietary intake from one blood test to the next. And what that means is that if there's a 60-day period in between blood tests, if I take the average dietary intake for those 60 days, that corresponds to the latter test. And note that I track my diet with a food scale. I weigh all my food. I enter, enter that data into Chronometer and then put that data into a spreadsheet so I'm able to calculate averages, for example, for a given 60-day period. So each blood test, whether it's telomere length or other biomarkers, has a corresponding average dietary intake. And then now that I have 10 blood tests, I can look at correlations. Uh, I, technically, I was looking at correlations after five blood tests. But after 10 blood tests, I can look at correlations between diet, including foods, macro, macros, and micros, with telomere length or with other biomarkers, as I mentioned, as I've shown in other videos. So here's the first portion of that data. And note that the, the rest of these data are on Patreon. And the reason I did that is because there are 43 foods slash nutrients that were significantly correlated with, with a p-value less than 0.05 with telomere length. Now, going to Patreon to see that data may not be important, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, but note that these, these uh, six foods and or nutrients have a p-value that's less than 0.05. Now, in terms of the correlation as shown there, little r, which is the correlation coefficient, we can see that Parmesan cheese and cacao beans are inversely associated with, or inversely correlated with telomere length. So that suggests that relatively higher intakes of those two foods are significantly correlated with a shorter telomere length. 
Conversely, positive correlations for selenium, and the majority of my selenium comes from Brazil nuts. So you can see Brazil nuts are actually significantly correlated with telomere length too. That suggests that relatively higher intakes, or at least towards the higher end of my range of intake, is significantly correlated with a longer telomere length. And then additionally, vitamin B1 and ground black pepper also have positive correlations. But note that these are unadjusted correlations, and that's potentially important because calorie intake is also significantly correlated with telomere length. So are these changes, are these foods related to uh, a longer or shorter telomere length, or is it just calories that may be driving these, these correlations? In terms of the correlation for calorie intake with telomere length, that's what's shown here. And we can see that significant inverse correlation. You can see the little r correlation coefficient is negative. So a relatively higher calorie intake is significantly correlated with a shorter telomere length in my data. And conversely, a relatively lower calorie intake is significantly correlated with a longer telomere length. Now, with that in mind, what happens if I'm able to consistently reduce my calorie intake below its current about 100, uh, 2,100 calories per day to somewhat lower, somewhere around 2050? Uh, based on extrapolation of, of this graph, I may be, be able to more consistently see closer to 7.2 kilobases for testing in 2024. So stay tuned for that data in, in uh, 2024. But I should mention uh, there's going to be a lower limit to this. One can only get so lean before I start to impact muscle mass, which that is the last thing I want to do. It's get as lean as possible while not messing up all the uh, any biomarkers, right? What's the lowest limit of leanness where I can optimize the majority of the biomarkers with, without messing up other biomarkers. And we'll see that that may be the case for some biomarkers like heart rate variability and resting heart rate in terms of body weight, but that's a story for another day. So in terms of now looking at adjusting these unadjusted correlations for calorie intake, are any foods or nutrients significantly associated with telomere length after adjusting for calorie intake? So that's what I started to do here. And now in this model, we've got both Parmesan cheese and calorie intake. And in other words, again, is Parmesan cheese significantly correlated with telomere length after adjusting for calorie intake? And we can see that it is. So even after adjusting for calorie intake, a relatively higher Parmesan cheese intake is significantly associated with a shorter telomere length. So with that in mind, for the first test in 2024, coming up in a couple of weeks, I've made another smaller cut to Parmesan uh, cheese. I'm hesitant to completely take it out because it adds flavor uh, to food. So, uh, you know, I'm not trying to, there, there is a balance here between health and taste. And I'm not trying to completely eliminate taste for the benefit of health, or at least not yet. All right, so when looking then at the calorie adjusted p-values, we saw that the Parmesan cheese is significant. But then using this same approach, selenium is now not significantly associated with telomere length, and nor is vitamin B1. And if I continue down the list, Brazil nuts, cacao beans, and black pepper, those two would not be significantly correlated with telomere length after adjusting for calorie intake. So then the big question is, will this approach work? Will reducing Parmesan cheese, and I should mention as a side note, even though the calorie adjusted um, associations for selenium, Brazil nuts, cacao beans, and black pepper are not significant, I've actually kept my Brazil nut intake towards the higher end of my range to further test this hypothesis, and I've increased black pepper. So I usually eat about one gram, so I've doubled it to two. Whether that's going to make a dent, I don't know. We'll see. So rather than just purely relying on the stats, I can directly test these uh, correlations by changing intake and then reevaluating the correlations after each test. So whether or not it'll work, we'll see for the January test. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in including discount links for telomere length and epigenetic testing, NAD quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB and other biomarkers that are mostly different from the metabolomics, diet tracking, green tea, or if you'd like to support the channel, we, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.